The next phase for almost all of us in the Sinclair DNA study is deep clade testing. In that, we're looking for SNPs. That's a single nucleotide polymorphism. And it's a mutation that happens only once during, uh, in a specific person, and then is carried forward in time to all that person's descendants to this very day. It's the stability of these SNPs that's valuable to us in a, in a family DNA study, because they're believed to only mutate in one direction and one time, unlike an STR. And as a result of that, they're a terrific way to tie down your DNA to a specific geography during a specific time period. It's very important that we not look at the 67 marker test or the, even the 111 marker test alone. Those markers are what's called STRs, and they can mutate at different rates and in different directions back and forth, so they're less reliable for these kind of studies. They're important, but they, they will not give us the information that a deep clade test will. The most recent SNP we have in our worldwide Sinclair DNA study is called RL193, and you're looking at it. I'm a descendant of Alexander Sinclair, the 1698 immigrant, and we're in an SNP group called L, uh, L193A1. This work ties the descendants of Alexander Sinclair to a specific geography sometime between 800 and 1200 years ago. We're not yet precisely where the most recent common ancestor for this families were, but we know where they are, where the, where the families congregate now for the most part, and that is the border region of Scotland, the Marches area. That borderland region between Scotland and England was a heavily contested area between the years 1300 and 1600, and it gave rise to a group called the Border Reavers. Some of these families like Elliot, Clendenning, Vance, or Vaux, Little, McLean, uh, this group of different surnames share a common ancestor who lived about a thousand years ago, between 800 and a thousand years ago. The fact that we're related to those people does not mean we share a common ancestor back to 1300. In fact, it does look like we share that ancestor with our closest relatives in this group called A1, probably in about the year 800 AD. RL193 is a subset of an older SP called L21. L21 has wide distribution, just as you'd expect of an older one, as far east as Germany and as far west as Ireland. RL193 is a much more recent S&P, part of L21, and therefore we would expect a tighter distribution of it. Sure enough, that's exactly what we're finding. Among those tested so far, the marker is found in the border regions of England and Scotland. But just this past month, June of 2011, the L93 study has found this S&P in Sweden. Point being, it's far too early to decide where the MRCA of this S&P was located. One problem plaguing all DNA studies is the underrepresentation in England and France. I believe that when we get more testing done in England, we'll find that L193 is present there as well, and even over into Normandy and possibly Flanders and that's because of some of the genealogies of the families who carry this S&P in their blood. You have to understand the importance of having a recent S&P match with these families. It's as irrefutable as you can get. There are other possibilities to explain what our L193 connections mean. One is that our common ancestor is indeed in Scotland 800 to 1,000 years ago. That, too, is being explored. The really exciting part of all this S&P work is that we're getting closer and closer to the period of recorded genealogy, in this case the 12th century, and it's one of the most recent ones, if not the most recent one, that we've got. Here's how you can keep up with the latest developments in S&P studies for your own personal DNA results. First, go to your personal results page on Family Tree DNA. Look on the lower left and click where it says Haplotree. If it says you are eligible for an upgrade, then this means you should be taking the recommended test. It might very well mean there is an S&P test you should be taking. When you click that link, you'll be taken to the page that tells you the test and how much it will cost. Usually they're very affordable. The deep clade test is $89, but most of the specific S&P tests are about $29 each. When these test results come in, you'll click the same haplotree link and be taken to the same page, but your confirmed haplogroup will now be in the upper right. And if you scroll down to the lower left, you'll see the specific S&Ps you've tested for, and those will help you zero in on where your ancestors were during a specific time period. 
These are my own personal S&Ps. It's quite a long list. So the single nucleotide polymorphism called RL193, which the descendants of Alexander Sinclair seem to have, does pinpoint us back to a specific geography during a specific time. Our guess right now is that that, that is either Normandy or Lower England where we might share this common ancestor with the other members of the group called A1. A study of the work of KSB Keats Rohan shows many of these names had their origin in Normandy. Beryl Platts has some others from the Marches area up in Flanders. We don't seem to match them as closely at this point, all of them. Some we do. But that's the power of deep play testing and S&P studies, and I encourage every member of this family to go ahead and uh, contact me about how you should take the next step in looking for the right S&P for your particular lineage. And anyone outside of this family who happens to see this video, please feel free to contact me at stclairresearch.com, the contact link, if you want to talk more about this. The other thing I encourage you to do is go to stclairresearch.com Right at the top right of the page, look for the Blog Talk Radio series, and there you'll see an audio we just did with Bennett Greenspan, the president and CEO of Family Tree DNA. He does a great job of explaining S&Ps, STR, deep plate testing, and lots of other issues about DNA for genealogy. Check back here often for new videos and updates on the St. Clair Research Study as we continue to compare the DNA of the St. Clair family to the latest research in the field. Thank you.